Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Mattel Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom Roar of Horrors Baryonyx. The specimen was first discovered in 1983 in Surrey, England, and the animal was named Barry Walkiri in 1986. The name, however, Baryonyx means heavy claw and alludes to the animal's very large claw on the first finger. The name Walkiri, though, refers to its original discoverer, amateur fossil hunter William J. Walker. Now, speaking of walker, let's take the measurements here for this giant walker. That's a segue. Uh, the length from tail to the end of its nose, you're looking at at exactly 13 inches in length. And while we're at it, going from the bottom of its feet to the very top of its head, it would be roughly five and a half inches. You would have to also imagine as well that in real life, the Baryonyx would be considerably bigger than, of course, the toy we're looking at here. Now let's do a couple of comparisons. We'll move over the Baryonyx and we'll move in. Get his legs to straighten out here. The Metricanthiosaurus. Also really dug that one as a Roarvor. And one of my personal all-time favorites, the Allosaurus. Part of my arm will also be brought into the camera here. But you can see the differences between the three dinosaurs. We'll kind of tip them sideways too so that you can, there we go. We'll put them sideways. Now, roughly, it does seem to me like the Baryonyx is slightly longer due to likely the snout length of this particular dinosaur, but they are roughly about the same size to one another. This one's getting reviewed just a little bit later due to the result of just not simply being able to find Baryonyx in stores. Sure enough, I just happened to go to Walmart the other day and they had one. I grabbed it immediately probably to the disdain of the child that was looking upon it. Don't worry, I didn't actually take it from a child that wanted, nobody was around. But I did ultimately grab this one and I'm so glad that I did. The Baryonyx does look very impressive. A rather interesting looking dinosaur. It might have looks, looks as if it might have taken some cues to the Jurassic World or Jurassic Park uh, 3 Spinosaurus. It has very similar aspects to it. Did you know that the Baryonyx, when they first discovered, it, discovered its fossil remains, they also found skeletal remains of fish in its stomach? alluding to the fact that it's one of the few dinosaurs the scientists have been able to prove actually consumed fish as its main source of protein. This one also kind of slightly alludes to more the fact that it was uh, a descendant to more a crocodile than other birds, for example, that other dinosaurs have been linked to. So Baryonyx definitely has some unique traits to him. As it goes for the plastic version of him, he is very colorful. Um, primarily from head to, well, not quite toe, but to tail. His coloring is almost more of like a darker, darker gray, darker brown sort of color. He's got this beautiful looking speckled treatment. It almost actually mimics that of a frog by the nature of the way how spread out it is and how it has all these very intricate little spotting to it. It makes up the majority of the dinosaur, so pleasantly be, to be said, it starts here. I know what you're gonna say. It starts here and it works its way almost to the full length of the tail. So you do get the afforded extra paint here. It doesn't just abruptly cut off, which I do really like. Go ahead. Yes, I know you were gonna say, it doesn't really technically start here, but over top of that, they've additionally airbrushed or added some additional metallic, this beautiful metallic silvery blue, which if you look at it, it actually kind of looks like some fishes. Fishes seem to have, many different species of fishes have that same sort of very bright metallic blue. It's beautiful. And it's really one thing that separates the Baryonyx from the rest of the other Roarvors that we've had a look at. Paint on this guy is exquisite, right down to the fact that they've painted in the tongue. Granted, yes, the hinge way, way at the back by its tonsils doesn't get afforded that, but at the very least, you get the majority of the paint being colored in from the roof of its mouth where the peanut butter and fish would get stuck 
and also the tongue area there as well. The teeth are a vibrant color of uh, off yellow, uh, yellowish white. They are not overly spiky. You don't have to worry about pricking your, oh, ow, ooh, you don't have to worry about pricking your fingers at all. But it's got a very narrow, very narrow looking uh, head construction. It forfeits really the broader nature of some of the, you know, the regular dinosaur heads that we've seen before. And again, in favor of a more crocodilian or alligator uh, type of head design. The eye is painted in very nicely and some of that same darker color I'm pleasantly able to say also makes its way around the eye so it does bring the eye out as opposed to the eye just simply being part of the brown coloring. The scale work on here is exquisite very reptilian like running all the way down its neck under well his belly area there the legs of course, you've got your Jurassic Park logo on the one side. You've got your Dino QR code, which we will scan for the app in a second. And if you do notice this honeybee sort of pattering underneath, that's where the speaker is and the battery compartment. Luckily, and I have not even mentioned this for the other dinosaurs when we looked at the Roarvors, I'm pleasantly surprised and happy that they also put screws in there so that if you ever wanted to change the batteries when these dinosaurs eventually died, you could take them out. Now, don't knock it. There are some ones on the market, not necessarily out to this day, but there's toys out there that have the battery compartment essentially sealed shut. There's really no way you can actually get in there and grab a battery. That is ridiculous. If you ever want to have these long term, you know, you should have the option to be able to unscrew the belly, or in this case, any of the battery compartment plates, and be able to change out the batteries. And luckily, uh, Baryonyx, as well as all the other Warvors, have that. His arms are very bulky. You can also see as well as the name uh, uh, mentions that he does have one longer uh, nail, one longer pointer finger so to speak than the rest of the claws making him very unique in design. His arms are very broad as well, not a very skinny looking arm here. Baryonyx definitely does work out and it clearly shows here by how broad these arms are. Now articulation on this guy, his arms hinge outward you can also technically rotate them all the way around, but yeah, they kind of stop here. They say no dice, no dice, you can't go any further than that. I suppose forcing it, you probably could get it around, but again, I really wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to break this guy's poor arms. It's bad enough he's extinct. Let's not also break his arms off in the process. The arms, like I said, hinge outward. His legs, I have to say, are very generously given articulation. Not only do they rotate technically all the way around, but you can also hinge the legs outward as well. I know, I know you also want to see the gimmick. Okay, so there's the button on the top. Let me go through that right now. You can see it clear as day. Very outlined cutout area of the button. It's right there, you go ahead and press it and he will cycle through some phrases. You'll maybe tell some jokes along the way. Let's go ahead and press the button here. The reasoning is why I delayed opening up his mouth was something I wanted to show you. Unfortunately, the sound is triggered more so by the button, not by the release of the mouth. And that works in two folds, that in one way it's good, the other way it's bad. In good ways, if you want to display any of the Roarvors, they are permanently with their mouths open. At least the carnivores are. I don't think the Triceratops was, but at the very least, the carnivores all have pre-opened mouths, which when you are displaying them, they look a little bit more menacing, which I think fits the bill properly if you want to have these displayed. Nobody really wants a, for example, a Baryonyx or an Allosaurus with their mouths closed. You want to have them very wide opened, looking as if they're going to be attacking their prey. So that benefits that from that regard. Unfortunately, it means though, when you are pressing the button, it does seem like the jaw is off sync. It's not quite synced up with the, the button. So when you're already pressing the button, the first thing it's gonna do is gonna close its mouth. Well, it already starts making the audio and it doesn't quite line up. As you can see right here, even if I hold the button, it doesn't, what they really almost should have done is put a mechanism in there 
that when you press the button, the mouth would close, and then when you release the button, it would project the audio. So at least it would be paired up rather than just doing like that, for example. The best bet, I suppose, is just simply pressing the button fast and not slow. So at the very least, you can time somewhat the audio to the way that the mouth is opening here. Now, this reviewer wouldn't consider himself necessarily a paleontologist, nor did I have to go around digging up fossils to, to uncover baryonyx, but I felt as if I was almost on the same similar journey, combing the aisles and the dark depths of toy stores and retail stores to find this lone dinosaur, the one completing my Roarvores collection, to no avail. Couldn't find him. I considered him almost ordering him online, but I know to be a true paleontologist, I wouldn't want to order him online. That's cheating. I'd have to continue my search until finally he was revealed. And I finally found him at Walmart. I think the price point here on the Baryonyx as well as the other Roar Force is about $14 to $15. It's not an overly expensive dinosaur, but you get a good sized piece that has necessary articulation where it needs to have it. And of course, it has the audio and the mouth hinging abilities. Of the Roarvores, I might say this one is my particular favorite. I do like the pattern work of the paint that's on its legs as well as its spine. And I additionally love that blue silver treatment that's across the top of its head. Plus it's also got a neat looking sleek design. Of all the Roarvores we've looked at on this channel, and I've had a look at all of them now, my favorites are the Baryonyx, of course the Triceratops, and the Allosaurus. Uh, if you are looking to uncover these for yourself, you may have a, an easier journey than I had, but you should be able to find this guy as well as the rest of the Roarvores in toy stores and retail stores. Today we were having a look at the Mattel Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom Roarvores Baryonyx. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of the previously looked at Roarvores reviews, you may want to trek your journeys over to the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom playlist, where I've had a look at everything Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom leading up to the release of the big movie. I pretty much covered not all the toy line, but I'd like to think I covered off the majority of the toy line, and I probably have covered off a considerable amount. So there's really a lot of videos that you can go there and check out and watch at your viewing pleasure. We're going to have a look at some more of these heading uh, in the next couple of videos, so stay tuned for that. Of course, some regular non-dinosaur related videos will be coming your way as well, guys. Make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below, and, 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 and make sure as well you head over to my main channel. Uh, of course, at the end of this video, head over to my main homepage channel and scroll down the video section. See if there's any videos that you may have missed along the way. I know I used to say hit that little bell notification, but apparently that still doesn't fix the problem with videos not being seen by you guys. So of course, hit the bell notification. Of course, hit the subscribe button if you haven't done it already. But make sure you also head over to the main page and just kind of scroll down, see if there's any videos that you may have missed along the way. I always welcome uh, new comments in older videos. As always guys, thanks for watching as you always do. I'll see you next time.